Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. In my last few videos, I talked about the Nikon F and Nikromat FTN. The subject of this video is what I and many others consider the finest mechanical 35mm single lens reflex camera ever made, the successor to the F, the Nikon F2. The Nikon F had been Nikon's flagship camera for 12 years when the F2 was introduced. The F was a camera of choice for many thousands of professional photographers all over the world. However, it was not perfect and it had some inconvenient features. Most inconvenient was the fact that you had to remove the back in order to load film. Nikon listened to photographers and the F2 had some what I consider major and many minor improvements over the F. So first, let's go over those improvements. All right, so what I want to do here is show you the two cameras side by side. All right, and you will notice on the top plate and even at the bottom, the F2 is more rounded. You can see that here, okay, where the F was kind of squared off, sharper edges, which makes the F2 a little more com uh, comfortable to hold. Also on the mirror box, you will notice the mirror box on both cameras, and here we have the F kind of squared off where the F2 is more rounded. Just made it more convenient to hold. Now, let's talk about that major improvement. I showed you how the back on the F uh, needed to be removed. The F2 has a similar key on the bottom to open the back. However, on the F2, it springs right open. Now the back can be removed. Uh, these cameras had 250 exposure backs. Actually, the uh, F2, I believe, also had a 400 exposure back. You just press down on this little spring catch here and you could remove the back and then easily, very easily, put it back on. Okay, we'll get more into that in a little bit. Coming to the front of the camera, uh, the big improvement, this was what I consider a major improvement, the mirror lockup. In order to lock up the mirror, you press the depth of field preview button, which is located in the same spot as on the F. You will notice the lens stops down. But you press it, and you move this lever to the right, and it locks up the mirror. No longer are you wasting a frame. With the F, you had to release the shutter in order to lock up the mirror, uh, no longer with the F2. So I consider that a big improvement. To bring the mirror back down, just flick the lever back up. Okay, so what else? Okay, you will notice on the F2, uh, we have a plastic tip advanced lever, okay, compared to the F. You will also, as far as the advanced lever, um, they shortened the stroke a little bit from 136, 136 degrees on the F to um, 120 degrees on the F2. You can still advance film in shorter strokes as well. You also notice the standoff position. They're about the same. I think it's about 30 degrees. But you will notice on the F2, there's a red dot exposed when you pull the advanced lever out. And that is for the meter, okay? The meter is not built in to the camera, same as the F. It is built into the photomic meter finders. So they took the batteries out of the finder and put them into the camera, which makes the photomic finders for the F2 more compact than the ones for the F. And the batteries are installed on the bottom of the, of the camera, like many cameras. It took two S76 silver batteries to 1.5 volt. However, um, there's, those are still available, but you could also use these uh, Dorso lithium. It's a single battery, it's a three volt, it's the one third N, okay? It's about four bucks. Now, I don't have the prism finder. There was a standard prism finder similar to the one on the F. 
available for the F2. But by the time the F2 came out, just about everybody was using um, the through-to-lens meters, uh, the, the photomic. So there are a lot more of these standard prisms for the F available than for the F2. And I will, in a future video, in my next video actually, I will talk about all the different photomic finders that were available for the, uh, for the Nikon F2. This one, known as the DP1, um, is, uh, has center-weighted metering, just like the old uh, FTN finder for the F, using two CDS cells. You will also notice on the F2, um, this collar around the um, shutter release. Um, it has three positions. The one on the F had two positions, advance and rewind. This one has a central position, which allows just for normal release of the shutter. It has the L position, which locks the shutter release. And it also has a T position. All right, so we're going to set this to T, make sure the shutter is cocked. We're going to set our shutter speed dial to B. Okay, and we are now going to use our self timer, and it has settings of two, four, six, eight, and ten seconds. We're going to set it to four seconds. Okay, hopefully, you could see that. And I'm going to open the back so you could see what happens. And what this does, it gives you timed using in conjunction with the shutter, the collar around the shutter release set to T, and the um, shutter speed dial set to B. It allows you timed exposures from 2 to 10 seconds. Okay, so that gave us time 4 seconds. So a nice feature to have. Uh, the F only went only gave you a B setting and timed exposures down to one second. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, the shutter speed dial, <clears throat> you will notice goes from B up to one two thousandth of a second. The F only went to one one thousandth of a second. Also, you will notice there is this little pink line between a sixtieth and one one twenty-fifth of a second. That's the one eightieth of a second electronic flash sync speed whereas the F only gave you down to a 60th. Not a huge improvement, but a little, a little one, uh, to be sure. Um, now, when you also, on the F2, shutter speeds between 180th, that flash sync speed, and 1 2,000th are settable anywhere in between. And so you can now use the shutter speed dial to fine-tune your exposure, to center the needle in the viewfinder, uh, on the photomic finders. What else do we have here? Uh, the accessories for the F2 uh, for the um, shutter release are exactly the same as on the F. The great cable release that Nikon makes, the AR2 cable release screws right in around the shutter release at the bottom. Also the AR1 soft shutter release screws right in, same as the F. Uh, focusing screens, they take the same focusing screens. The F and the F2 use the same focusing screens. Um, there's about 20 of them uh, that, that were available. Um, finder accessories, actually the finders for the F, except for the photomics, will fit on the F2. Um, but, and also the finders for the F2 will fit on the F, but on the F you need to remove the nameplate on the front of the camera. Rewind knob is basically the same. Okay, you have your um, connection to uh, put the accessory uh, flash coupler, flash unit coupler that Nikon calls it. It just slides right over the rewind knob and actually the one for the F2 locks in place. This is usable on the F as well. Uh, you will notice on the side of the photomic finder there's a little connection here. That is for not certain Nikon flash units. And you attach the flash unit onto the shoe and then connected it here. Gave you a ready light in the viewfinder. Uh, like the F, the F2 gives you a virtual 100% view uh, on the focusing through the prisms. Okay, 
A lot of other cameras, a Nikomat, for example, give you about a 92 or 93% of um, the actual uh, image that appears on the film. One thing they didn't improve is the way you release, uh, remove the viewfinder to change screens or to change finders. You still have to use an object, a pen preferably, to press in on the release here. And then there is a um, lever that you uh, press down and that releases the finder. Okay, um, what else? Uh, lens release, lens lock release is still in the same place. The um, flash sync connection was moved around to the front of the camera, whereas on the F, on the F, as you can see, it was on the corner. Also, it's threaded on the uh, F2 so that you could use a shutter uh, cord, a PC cord that was thread that had the male threads that screws in so it's not going to fall out. Also, the strap lugs were moved to the corner, to the front corner of the camera, where on the F, they were on the side. Uh, the only advantage to that I see is occasionally when you were advancing film on the F, the uh, neck strap could get caught on the advanced lever. The mirror on the F2 was lengthened, so uh, less chance of cutoff with long telephoto lenses. Uh, also, let's look at the bottom of the camera. I showed you the key to open the camera. Here is where the batteries went. Two uh, 1.5 volt silver batteries, or you could use one of these Duracell lithiums, one third N. Uh, this is a three volt battery. They're about four bucks. You have your um, tripod socket, your rewind button. Now on the F, you had that uh, collar around the shutter release uh, marked either A or R. So you turned it to R to rewind film. This is more conventional. Most 35 millimeter cameras have a button on the bottom. You just press the button in, releases the internal sprocket and you could rewind your film. You also notice two connections here for a motor drive. Um, motor drives for this camera just screw into the bottom of the camera uh, and on the F they needed to be modified at a Nikon service facility and then you remove the back on the camera and install the motor drive um, in place of the standard back. Uh, one other thing uh, and this holds true for the F's with um, a circular eyepiece. Um, there are still rubber eye cups available, and they are the rubber eye cups that are for the Nikon, some of the Nikon FM and FE series cameras, also the FA. These are about $20, $22, I believe, but they are still available, and um, they just, you know, screw in to the eyepiece. The eyepiece took accessories such as a right angle finder, an eyepiece magnifier, a rubber eye cup, similar to those on the Nikon F. Okay, so next time I'm uh, going to be talking about the finders for the F. We really didn't get into the finders, the photomic finders. There were several. Uh, they improved them over the years. Um, also, oh, one thing, forgot this. Uh, you'll notice, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll notice on the back of the camera, this is for the film box, the end of the film box, so you can remember what type of film uh, you have in the camera. You just tear that off the box, slip it in here, uh, or, I mean, or you could use a little piece of paper. If there were some notes you needed to have with you, um, you could just slip that in right here. Okay, now before we end this video, I just want to show you how to load film in an Icon F2. Um, and my next video will be concerning the photomic finders for the F2. There were several. Actually, I believe there were more photomic finders for the F2 than there were for the F. Um, they kept improving them. And um, we'll go over that in detail in the next video. So let's show you how to load some film into, just going to make sure we have this set to the central position. Okay. One thing, before you um, 
open the back of the camera, especially if the camera's been sitting around a while and you haven't taken any pictures. Just unfold your rewind crank and just turn it a little bit. If it turns freely, there's no film in the camera. If you have resistance, that means you still have a roll of film in the camera. Okay, so you don't want to open up the back and expose that film. Okay, so I'm going to leave the rewind crank unfolded and I'll explain to you why in a little bit. All right, so now let's open the back of the camera. Again, you turn the key on the bottom, just open it, turn it, and the camera back snaps open much easier than the F. Okay, now also you will notice on the F2 you can push the rewind knob up. On the F you didn't have to do that because the back and the bottom of the camera was off and you just slipped the film in. So we're just going to drop it in, press it back down. We're going to just turn the take up spool so we have a slot right there. We're just going to stick this in a little bit, make sure it engages the sprocket and now we're just going to turn it. Okay, and before you close the back, just make sure it has engaged top and bottom, that the sprocket holes engage the sprocket top and bottom. Okay, and make sure the film is straight. Okay, we're now going to close the back and lock it. Okay, now let's turn the camera back up. Now, you will notice the rewind crank I have left open. Okay, so let's make two blanks. All right, now our frame counter says one. You will notice, and I forgot to point this out as I was doing this, but I'll show you again. Notice the rewind crank. As you make those first two blanks, okay, look at the rewind crank. The reason I keep it open and just advance film. You will notice it's turning. If that rewind crank is turning, that means the film was loaded properly and it caught onto the take up spool. Uh, if it's not, then open up the back and, uh, you know, uh, correct the situation. Okay, um, nothing more frustrating than thinking you're taking great pictures and then you come to realize that the film never caught in the take-up spool. So again, just keep your eye as you advance film. Just keep your eye on that rewind knob. Okay, so now let's rewind this. Uh, this is actually a good roll of film. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press in the button on the back and I'm going to rotate. Now I don't want to wind this all the way in, so just listen carefully. I don't know if you heard that. You heard the film pull off the take-up spool. Okay, that means the leader is left out. I'm going to open the back. And there we go. Just pull up on your rewind knob and remove the film. Okay, so that's it. That's how to load a Nikon F2. Um, and watch for my next video where we'll be talking about the Photomic Finders. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get a new video out every week, every Wednesday uh, morning. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching and I will talk to you next time.